Hi everyone. In this video we're going to try to compute every single possible limit that you could consider for this rational function. So that might seem impossible since there are infinitely many limits, but we can take advantage of some important theorems that we've seen that allow us to handle almost every point uh, at once. Okay, so the first thing to think about is um, the theorem that says that rational functions are continuous on their entire domain. Okay, so a continuous function we know satisfies limit as x approaches a of f of x equals f of a. So this is going to be true for every a in the domain of f of x. Okay, so now we just need to look at f of x and think about its domain. So it's a rational function, so the only problem could possibly be when the denominator is equal to zero. So if we try to factor these polynomials on the top and the bottom, uh, we start seeing we can pull out an x squared down here, and we have x plus 1. All right, we can actually further factor the numerator. This is difference of squares, x minus 1, x plus 1. Okay, and down here we have two copies of x and one copy of x plus 1. Okay, so at this point we can see that the only possible x values that would give us any trouble are the ones that make the terms in the denominator 0. Okay, so if x is 0, then the whole denominator will be 0, or if x is minus 1, then the whole denominator will be 0. Okay, so we just are now able to conclude the value of every single limit except these two points. So this definition of continuity applies to this function for all values a except a equals 0 and a equals minus 1. So for instance, the limit as x approaches 1 of this function, it's just going to be f of 1. Right? Since 1 is in the domain of this rational function, it's a point of continuity and the limit is then equal to the function value. So we can just plug in 1, we get 1 cubed minus 1 over 1 cubed plus 1 squared. This is 1 minus 1 over 1 plus 1 is 0. 0 over 2 is 0. Similarly, if we consider the limit as x approaches 5 with f of x. Again, this is in the domain. We know that because it's not making the denominator equal 0. So that means the function is continuous there, and hence the limit is equal to the function value. 5 cubed minus 5 over 5 cubed plus 5 squared. So 5 cubed is 125, so this is 120 over uh, 120, 150. And every single x value except for x equals 0 and x equals negative 1, we could do the exact same way. Okay, so let's consider one of these more difficult limits, the ones that's not covered by continuity. So the limit as x approaches 1 of this function, f of x, well, the first thing we can realize by looking at the factored form of f of x up here in the top right is we have this matching factor, x plus 1, in the top and the bottom. That's exactly the factor that's making the denominator 0 when we plug in x equals minus 1. Okay, so since there's a matching factor on the top, we can use the cancellation theorem to fill in the hole at negative 1 and cancel out these two factors. Okay, so the limit as x approaches negative 1, that's the same as the limit as x approaches negative 1 of x times x minus 1 over x squared. All we've done is filled in the hole at negative 1, but for all the other points near negative 1 especially, the function f of x is the same as this simpler function. This simpler function has the, the added property that it is continuous at x equals negative 1. Right? This is just another rational function, so it is continuous on its entire domain, and its domain now includes negative 1. So now we can plug negative 1 into this function and evaluate the limit. Okay, so negative 1 times negative 2 is 2 over 1 squared, so we get 2. Okay, now for this other limit, the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x, we have to be even more careful. So the reason is, well, we might look at this function and say, again, the factored form from the upper right, 
we've got this factor of x, x minus 1, x plus 1, x squared, which we could write as x times x times x plus 1. Okay, and again, we can use the cancellation theorem to cancel out not only this matching factor of x plus 1, but this matching factor of x. Okay, and, and what we're left with is the function x minus 1 over x. So it's important to realize again that this function is another rational function, and so it too is continuous on its entire domain, but the domain of this function is actually every point except x equals 0. And if you think about it, we can't cancel out that x in the denominator. Right? It's not possible to just fill in a certain hole by canceling a factor. As x approaches 0, the numerator is approaching negative 1, and the denominator is approaching 0. So this situation comes up quite often, and it's really important to stop and think about what happens to a fraction when the numerator is approaching some non-zero number, say 1 or minus 1, but the denominator is approaching 0. Right, so the denominator approaching 0 is different from the denominator being equal to 0. Right? We can't have 0 in the denominator, it's never defined. But as our denominator approaches 0, right, we have values like 0 0.1, 0 0.01, negative 0 0.001. None of these numbers are actually equal to 0, so we can divide. And if you think about what happens when you divide a number by something that gets smaller and smaller, the quotient gets larger and larger. Okay, so this is in general what's going to happen when you have a non-zero number over something that's approaching zero, we say that the fraction is blowing up or approaching plus or minus infinity. So this is one of the situations when we say that the limit does not exist because the function values are not approaching anything. They're just getting bigger and bigger and bigger or more and more negative without bound. And this is the situation when we're going to say that the limit is infinity or the limit is minus infinity, but for these situations it's useful to compute the limits separately from the left and the right. So again, the, the overall limit, it's enough to just consider this simpler function x minus 1 over x, because for values close to 0, these functions have all the same values. The cancellation theorem tells us that it's enough to just consider this function Okay, and so when we think about what happens to this function when x is near 0, we could consider making a table and think about just a few x values that are really small but positive numbers, getting really close to 0. So when this happens, the denominator is going to be really close to negative 1. Right? It's going to be this number minus 1 over this number, over x. Okay, and that is... 999, negative. Okay, when we do this one, we would get even more 9s over an even smaller x value. We're making the denominator smaller and smaller, and now we're basically dividing negative 1 by 0. 0.00001. That's going to give us 99999, negative. Okay, and hopefully you can convince yourself that as you make x smaller and smaller and smaller, closer to 0, this fraction is basically just negative 1 divided by a smaller and smaller and smaller number. Those numbers do not approach anything, but they do get more and more and more negative all the time. So that's exactly the situation when we'll say the limit is minus infinity. Okay, so it makes sense. Even though the limit doesn't exist, and the left and the right limits don't exist, it makes sense to say that the limit as x approaches 0 from the right is minus infinity because that tells us exactly what the function values are doing. Even though they're not approaching a particular number, they are doing something specific that we can capture by writing this symbol. Okay, so I'll let you check that the limit as x approaches 0 from the left of f of x is equal to plus infinity. Again, this is telling us that the limit does not exist, but it's more specifically telling us how the limit doesn't exist and what the function is doing near x equals 0. Okay, so that's actually all of the limits as x approaches every possible number on the real number line.